Now, the charge for that officer is called one endangerment. Today's ruling left two big questions. What exactly is that charge, and why is there a discrepancy over the no-knock warrant? 10 Tampa Bay's Josh Sidorowitz takes a closer look for you. So Kentucky statute lays out wanton endangerment in legalese like this. Local attorney Jay Abear says it is essentially one step below manslaughter. It's a little bit like firing into a crowd or firing a shot into the air. So a reckless disregard. Um, in Florida, we have a charge called culpable negligence, which is kind of in that realm of of similar charges. That charge applies to former officer Brett Hankinson, not the other two officers who Kentucky's AG said were using self-defense. Not just self-defense, but justifiable use of deadly force. You have to meet force with force. The boyfriend acknowledged that he fired first and didn't know who was coming through the door. So that then opens that self-defense issue to be put into play. Another point of contention. I mean, she's in her apartment. She's in the sanctity of her home. Whether this was a no-knock warrant. Good afternoon. Kentucky's Attorney General said Wednesday officers did identify themselves, apparently backed up by sworn testimony of one witness. Yeah, that's how hope what he's And he claims that he heard them say it only once. The New York Times has similarly reported just one out of a dozen neighbors interviewed heard the officers. I never once heard them that night announce themselves. There was no identification at all. We're like, police I didn't hear that at all. The grand jury got all of the information that was available to them, and they're the ones that made that recommendation. And as a society, we may not agree with that, but that's they were able to look at everything. Now, to that end, Kentucky's governor has called on the state attorney general to release as many findings in the case to the public as possible. This case sparked change to policing in many places, including right here in the Bay Area. Tonight, we got a sharper insight into why Taylor's death has resonated throughout the nation from the NAACP president in Manatee County. When you have an injustice in your home or in your community, it's an injustice everywhere. So for us to say that this is um, something that has been a scar on us for years and years and years, we got to start dealing with that. So I just, I truly believe in actually making sure that we put pressure where the pressure should be. And that's allowing the police to know that we're not for defunding the police, but we are going to hold you accountable just like you hold everybody else accountable.